Yep. Yep. All right, friends and family, team and fans, my dear friends from around the entire world. How are you all doing? All right, Matt is in the building as well. I love it. Let me get my boy Matt DeLong here. Mr. Ahmet Cadden, how are you? Craig Levine. We got Jalen, who is Christine's son. Jalen, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Much appreciated. Johnny J Bones Guarco. Hey, man. Ken, how are you? Pat, Robert Eddy in the building. Hey, buddy. Johnny Guarco says, Aloha. All right. Robert says, AKA Mr. Marbles. That's it. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so awesome. Johnny says, summer is here. Fantastic. For all the parents and all the children, uh, type in the chat pane, who you are, who you with, who's all joining us, and we'll talk to every single one of you out there. Ahmed says, my daughter, Isabella. Isabella, thank you so much for being here. Summer Guarco, thank you. Max and Ben Levine. Oh, my goodness. The two heroes, world changers. <laughs> Life alterers. I love it. We have Seiya and Nora are both also here. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. My dear, my dear friends, I'm quite excited about this. As always, I'm sure that you know this, but every single March at Real Life Trading is what we call Kids Month, also known as Young Adults Month or whatever else you want to say. But we are here to do our absolute best to pour into you and to provide true, amazing value for every single person in attendance. So if you don't know, AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. And our mission of my company is to enrich lives. And we do that by educating the world and providing financial freedom. So if you are watching this from a computer or from a tablet or from an iPad or a phone, I am a YouTube streamer. I do have almost 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. Here's my son, Gabe. He's also a YouTuber. And so we're working on creating value by pouring into other people. And this particular webinar and class and program has a very specific intention, right? One of the quotes that I love and I live by and I try to implement in every aspect of my life, the quality of your questions determines the quality of your life, All right, The quality of your questions determines the quality of your life. So we want us all to come up with new and exciting questions to improve our lives. That is the goal of this webinar. So if you are a parent, thank you for being here. And if you are a child, right, and you are interested in asking any question that you want to two people, both myself and Matt along, we have experience, knowledge, wisdom. We spend a lot of time with your parents and we would love to pour into you. So go ahead and throw at me, what questions do you have? Jalen says, I am from Melbourne, Australia, and I'm nine years old. I love it. So Jalen, let me ask you this question. What do you think your first car is going to be? Your first car, what do you think it's going to be? I'll let you type that into the it's chat. It's going to be a pony. <laughs> <laughs> a pony. I love it. Darian says, Brooke is here. I love it. Brooke. How old are you? See, man, that's so that's so cool. Tesla. Yeah, Jalen's gonna have a Tesla for his very first vehicle. What's your first vehicle gonna be, Gabe? I don't know. Gabe's not sure. Darian says Brooke. It, Brooke is ten. Awesome, Brooke. And where do you live in the world? Where are you from? 
Summer Gorko. How old are you now, Summer? Are you able to type into the chat pane? So go ahead and type in, how old is everyone? Let's start with that question. How old are you, Gabe? 11. You're 11. Cool. <laughs> are you excited about being a teenager? Yes. Summer is eight. Is that right? Summer Guarco, you're eight years old now? Johnny, is that true? She's eight? <laughs> what? Oh, my goodness. Allison says my oldest is six. Not typing that fast yet. Yeah, I love it. It took me a while to learn the keyboard. I actually had a class um, in my middle school that helped me teach typing. I still don't type nearly as well as Matt along. Brooke says, I'm 11. I live in Los Angeles, California. I love it. Saya says, I am 12 and Nora is nine. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm honestly thrilled, elated, extremely happy. So what I would love to do is just field any questions that you guys have. Go ahead and type them into the chat pane. What questions do you have about anything in the entire world? So it looks like Max Levine, Craig's son, has a question about Tesla. All right. What's that question, Matt? Let's read it together. He has 10 shares of stock of uh, 10 shares of Tesla and he wants to ask for tips for some cash flow. Nice. So first of all, Max, awesome job owning 10 shares of Tesla. That's amazing. So in order to create cash flow, what you could consider doing is figuring out ways to buy and sell Tesla on a frequent basis. Right, something that could you could do maybe over the course of every few weeks or every few days, maybe even every few months, but actively, actively buy and sell. So let me ask, uh, answer the question, Max, by stating a fact. Let's say Tesla goes from 600 to 700, back down to 600, right, back up to 700, back down to 600. Could you sell your 10 shares at 700? Buy ten more. Uh, buy more shares at six hundred. Sell those shares that you make at seven hundred again, and buy more shares at six hundred again. Is that possible? Max says yes. And my dear friend, that is how you can create cash flow with any particular stock. Yep, that's a phenomenal question. That's I love it. Question. Yeah, but that would be kind of like an active in and out, right? Being able to take something and you can do that anytime. In fact, let's do some quick math. Let me pull out a whiteboard really fast. I know you all love whiteboards. So new share whiteboard, here we go. And um, type a two into the chat pane if you can see a yellow smiley face. I just wanna make sure that the, uh, okay, cool. So the whiteboard works. All right, so let's just do some very, very fast math. All right, Max. So 10 shares of Tesla, 10 shares of any company, realistically. Let's say you buy 10 shares of something at $200, right? So anyone else who wants to answer this question for me, throw it to the chat pane. How much would you have to have to invest 10 shares at $200 into anything in the entire world? Gabe, do you know the math on that? What's 10 times 200? Who here knows? What is 10 times 200? Here's the way I do it. Is I take this, when you, anytime you multiply 10 times something, just add a zero to it. So 10 times 200 is 2,000, yep. So you'd have to invest $2,000 to buy 10 shares of something at 200. All right, let's say that thing goes from 200 to 300, my dear friends. Uh, sorry, 200 to three, 300, not 3,000. 200 to, three, to 300. And let's say you sold those 10 shares at 300, how much money would you bring in? How much money would you bring into your account? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, 3,000. 3,000. So that's, that's how much cash flow. If something went from 200 to 300, how much cash flow would that create? Cash flow is the difference between this number and this number. Max, good job. Who else wants to try that out? All right, beautiful. Great job, Brooke. I love it. That's fantastic. So Brooke and Max are nailing it. So 3,000 minus 2,000 is 1,000. So this will be $1,000. That's cash flow that you have created. 
and your portfolio, your account now, instead of being worth 2000 is worth 3000. So Max, if this $300 company went back down to 200, how many shares could you now buy? How many shares could you buy? So let's do the math really quick. More than 10. More than 10. So it will be 3,000 divided by 200 equals, I believe, 15. So what do you guys think? Is 15 more or less than 10? It is more. Yep. So that means that as you recycle, right, as you are buying something, anything, it doesn't matter if it's stocks, it could be cell phones, it can be Instagram accounts, it can be houses, it can be Blackberries, it could be anything. If you create cash flow by buying something at a lower price, selling it at a higher price, and then repurchasing it again at a lower price and repeat that process over and over and over, you're going to do extremely well financially in life. Yeah. So great question, Max. Just getting out the gate and starting off with the real stuff. I am a fan. Now, Jalen had a really cool question. Um, I'm going to let Matt answer this one, and I would love to know what Matt's question is going to be. So Jalen says, how can I be like Warren Buffett? Oh, geez. That's <laughs> a big question. Yeah. What a great one, huh? Well, if you, if you marry someone with the last name of Buffett, you would be a little closer. <laughs> That's a great question. I can be more like Warren Buffett. Well, let's talk about Warren Buffett. So he, he is a kind of a buy and hold investor. He does not trade stocks in and out every day like some of us do. So uh, he started early on as a young entrepreneur selling like sticks of gum, like door to door. And some of you may be terrified to do that thing. Go, oh, what happens if someone slams the door in my face? But you, you get past that. And our boy, Jeremy Alexander Newsom here used to do the same thing. But instead of gum, he used to sell fruit. He used to sell bags of blackberries. Now, those blackberries did not actually belong to him. He kind of <laughs> picked them up on the way. <laughs> he borrowed them from his neighbor's uh, blackberry bushes. And I, I feel like you know, if if you want to be like Warren Buffett, which you really can't, you just need to be the best version of you that you need to start young and trying to understand how money works. One of the best books that I learned, I'm sorry, books that I read when I was super young was called Cash Flow Quadrant. And it kind of explains a little bit in more in depth about how money works and money is, doesn't quite work exactly as you think. And so uh, I would highly recommend that. That's it, if you're, if you're maybe 12, 13 or 14, you can probably get some of the, the concepts that it, it explains. So that would be a good place to start is read Cash Flow Quadrant, which is by Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, that, that's a good place to, to go. But I would say also start a micro business. So start something uh, for maybe, you know, work with your parents, maybe something that starts costs $800, a thousand dollars, start an online business, start a pet sitting, a yard mowing, something where you can kind of generate income. And the idea of working a job uh, for someone else uh, is not nearly as attractive if you have your own business where you, you own your business, you decide what you're able to do. Uh, both of my daughters, when they were, let's see, 13 or 14, they both had micro businesses. My oldest daughter had a Instagram account that we bought. We paid $1,500 for it. And I think I had like 130,000 followers, something ridiculous. And it was a travel Instagram and people would pay her anywhere from 25 to $50 to post. And she would keep all that. And she did that for, I think a year or two. And uh, she decided she didn't want to do it anymore. And we sold it for even more than we, than we purchased it for. And so just getting some of those early, early entrepreneurial experiences, the whole point is not to really make money. That's great if you can, but it's a great experience to to learn right to learn how money works to to get your feet i'm sorry your hands dirty with being an entrepreneur so uh, there, there's two things there's there's working to earn and there's also working to learn so oh. learning and earning uh and so i think that's a that's probably a couple of good places to get started i love that that's a great answer type in a two if you guys felt like that was a great answer and also um 
Brooke says, I've done that. Selling Girl Scout cookies and me and my friends are selling bracelets. Fantastic. That's a beautiful, beautiful start. So it's a, it's a rumor that Warren Buffett reads a lot. And just like Matt DeLong just said, you can work to learn or you can work to earn. If you want to earn, right? right you, have to, you have to spend time, you have to spend energy, you have to spend resources. And this is a great way to do it, right? You have to read, read books. Every time you look at a book, one of the best advices I could ever give you, if you were here watching this webinar, is read books with the word money in the title. Any book with the word money in the title, right, Gabe? Gabe's reading a book right now with the word money in the title. If you can study- Wait, like let me that, guess. It's called Money Grows on Trees? Yeah. Look at that. That's money it. Grows on Trees. So Here it's go. all about, you got to have the, if the word money is in the title, that's a huge, huge step in the right direction. Because if you want anything, you have to study more of those things. So I love that question. And that's a wonderful answer, Matt. Or cash flow in the title. Right. So cash yeah. flow. Button. Yep. Tyler says, Hey, Ty uh, Tyler says here I am. I'm 12 and I would like to start investing. Can you recommend an easy book for kids to start? What's the easiest investing book that you know of Matt? Well, there aren't a lot of great ones out there. There's not, um, especially for kids, uh, kids unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So Tyler, I would say this, I am actually semi working on one. I should probably put that a little bit higher up on the on the uh, opportunity list. Um, in fact, I really need to just start making that happen. So Matt, can you help me with that? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so how about this? How about, in, does it have to be a book or does it have, could it be an online course? So maybe something like trading for young adults, something like that, which uh, Jeremy has created an online course. Uh, maybe we can show that on the screen here in a second uh, is trading for young adults. And it's a, it's a great class. It's targeted for like tweens, tweens, like 12 to 15, 18, somewhere in there. And it kind of walks you through what the stock market is. And uh, a lot of professional financial advisors want to make the stock market sound super complicated, even though it really isn't. Uh, if you guys think about things like, um, like college and when you're in your 10, 12 years old, you feel like it's super complex. It, it's really not. But if you're able to take something complex and make it sound simple, that's what literally what an educator does. They take something complex, and make it sound simple. And so in that case, uh, trying to learn something and breaking it down into little bite-sized pieces makes what appears to be something complex a little more, a uh, little, little more bite-sized. So I would, I would say it doesn't necessarily have to be a book, but there is a great course on that. Can you click on the more info button there, Jer? Yeah, totally. Let's do that. So here it is. Click on more info. And this is what comes up. There you go. Kids for age nine to 23. And it talks about what the stock market is, how it works, how to place trades. And so even if some of you guys have maybe chores, you get maybe a weekly allowance, maybe you get birthday money, Christmas money. Uh, if you were to take little pieces of that and invest it in something like Tesla, like Pinterest over time, uh, you guys would be shocked at how much that thing will grow. So if you if you just make some assumptions and you take a hundred dollars and you make twelve percent a year, does someone want to put in a chat pane after thirty years how much would that hundred dollars be worth? Yeah, hundred dollars multiply growing at twelve percent a year, compounding over and over thirty years. What do you guys think that would be worth? I don't even know the answer to that question, Matt. It has to be worth a lot. It'd be 30x of whatever the beginning number was. You know? Wow. So if you start out with a thousand, it'd be 30,000. 12% a year for 12 years. That's correct. Amazing. So if you think about like a video game, you have to have a new pair of Air Jordans, you have to have, uh, you know, it, it, it does cost money now. But if you think about what that could be worth in the future, what is a pair of Air Jordans worth 30 years later uh, or, or any shoe, Reeboks, whatever? whatever kicks, uh, you know, catch your eye. If you think about it in those terms, you're like, wow, that uh, you imagine buying, uh, you know, like a $3,000, you're giving up $3,000 because you have to have a hundred dollar pair of shoes today. And obviously we're talking about just, um, something like 12% on your money for 30 years. But imagine if you're able to save a thousand or you work really hard one summer and you're able to save three or four or five thousand. And it's that same thing that that money tree that you plant 
and you, you just use seeds and your seeds are either time or money and you can trade time for money. So you're, you're mowing yards, you're babysitting, you're walking dogs, all kinds of stuff that you can do and you collect the money and you invest it. And then that snowballs into something massive over a period of time. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. That's a great question. And I had someone in the chat pay mention that, uh, you know, they looked at the price of that particular class and that, per, you know, the uh, particular person said it was expensive, right? So that particular class is f- uh, 49 US dollars. In which case I would have two answers for that, you know, being, uh, being expensive. So first my answer would be, you know, how much did you eat out the last month, right? Maybe nothing, maybe a little bit, but did you go to Chick-fil-A? Did you go to Arby's? Did you go to McDonald's? Did you go to Burger King? over the last month and how much did you spend just in the last month on food, eating out at McDonald's or Burger King. So if you guys can think about that. Um, so for example, today, Gabe, how much did we spend at Chick-fil-A today on you? Remember? No idea. So $12, right? So 12 us dollars is how much I spent today on a chick uh, chicken meal. So one meal and you are, right? 35% of the way there. So in essence, when you're looking at a cost like this, what you have to ask yourself is, and would I be able to receive $49 worth of value? Or, or more. Easily. Or more. Exactly. Can I, can, I re- can I learn something, right? And one of the things that in just this webinar alone that Matt said a moment ago, type in a six if you had no idea that you could create an Instagram account that you could buy an Instagram account, grow it, and then sell it for more money down the future, right? What about a seven? Type in a seven if you think that you can do that with a YouTube channel, right? You could buy an existing YouTube channel, grow it, and sell it down the run. Type in a seven if that's a brand new idea for you. Right. Javier says, no way. Absolutely, I promise. Happens all the time. So not only can you do that with Instagram or you can do that with YouTube, you can do that with Twitter. You can even do that with Roblox, right? You can take a character or a company or a, 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 a village, something that you build in Roblox, you can build it out and you can sell it to someone else. Yep. So, and, and $49 uh, for anybody over probably age eight, it, it may sound like a lot of money, but you know, the summer is coming, people's yards are going to need to be cut. If you work hard, it's going to be a simple, it's not going to be a big deal. It'll be a little, a little bit of work and you can do that. But also I'm sure every one of you guys have clothes that you don't necessarily use. You can maybe take it somewhere, sell some used clothes. You can, you know, help your parents put up a garage sale. I guarantee if if you want it bad enough, you'll figure out a way to make it happen uh, to to make the $49. But another way to think about it, Jeremy, uh, with that $49 is could $49 investment make you or could help you avoid a several hundred dollar mistake. In that case, it's really a no brainer, right? Yeah. Robert yeah. says my girls made $400 selling their old clothes at a consignment sale. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's a, that's a, that's 10 of those classes. <laughs> yep. That's incredible. Yep. And Tyler asked, where do you, how do you do that? Oops. Where do, how do you, how do you learn about the Instagram and the YouTube accounts? So there's uh there's several places uh, that sell them. I'm trying to think where we bought ours, which one, um, but you could just Google Instagram accounts for sale. <laughs> so technically they're, um, they're all different sizes and you just need to make sure you find um, all different size followers, but you just make sure. You, you, I don't you, believe you, Matt. I'm gonna put that to the test. I don't think there's no way that you can go and Google something and get the answer for it. <laughs> Going to summon the power I think of Google. Like a made up thing. Instagram accounts for sale. Oh. Let's see. Oh man. Look at all of these. So we have one right Some here. Some of those are, you're, they're actually talking about followers, but if you go down, you see Insta sale by Instagram accounts. There you go. Social Tradia. Yep. And they don't have to cost a lot. You can look at the listings there. So the cool part, gang, is when Jeremy and I were growing up, there was no Instagram. There was no TikTok. <laughs> there was no YouTube. 
at least for me, there probably was for Jeremy because he's super young. <laughs> but look at that. There's some right there. 129, 120,000 followers, $800. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so when you buy one of these, what you want to do is you just want to, some of you may love fitness. You may love soccer. You may love basketball, just something. We're just trying to throw some ideas out there to spur the, just get the gears turning a little bit, something to think about over the weekend. Uh, but it's, you know, if you have an account like that and someone is someone willing to pay you 25 or $50 to put their fitness or sports stuff in front of your $120,000 audience, mm -hmm. then if the answer is yes, you think someone would be willing to do that, then there you go. Yeah. You're on your way. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. interesting. I, again. Yeah. And so the, the only thing you have to be mindful of is what the engagement rate is. So if you're able to look at the actual, uh, like the actual Instagram account, make sure if they have 200,000 followers and you get two comments for every post and people aren't super engaged, but that engagement factor, Jeremy, is kind of like the implied volatility where it's kind of a wild card for how much, how valuable it really, really is. Yeah. So, yep. Mm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, awesome. So we're getting some great questions coming in the chat pane. We're going to be here for 30 more minutes, my dear friends. So make sure you can think of a question before I answer one. Gabe had one for me. Gabe, what's your question for me and for the world? Gaming stock. So Gabe says, what is my favorite gaming stock? What a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, I can answer that question. So let's see. Let me see if Matt knows the answer. Matt, what is my favorite gaming stock? I'll probably say Activision, but that may or may not be correct. Is it's that correct? Close. It's close. Uh, my favorite gaming stock is called Tencent. Oh, yeah. T-C-E-H-Y, Tencent Holdings. Uh, this company... Uh, yeah, they do so, so, so much massive, massive growth, huge, huge company. They own so many mobile games and mobile gaming devices. Um, I do like Activision. I have made some serious money on Activision. Um, Who owns the uh, Call of Duty franchise? Gabe would probably know that. Uh, Call of Duty is Activision. Is it Activision? Okay. Yep. Yep. Call of Duty is Activision. Uh, there's another one, Take-Two Interactive. So this is another gaming company. You have EA Sports. It's in the game. You have Electronic Arts. They're publicly traded. And now, boys and girls, Roblox. Roblox, Roblox is on the public market. Got an type inside in day. In the chat pane, if you play Roblox, game type of two into that chat pane, you play a million hours of Roblox every week. One million <laughs> hours. All right, so there's all the twos. Summer Guarco plays it. I love it. My Joey Malone. Too. Max says, my sister. Love it. So Roblox, this is a new, what's called an IPO. So who can tell me, what's IPO stand for? Do you remember, Gabe? Nope. Does anyone remember what IPO stands for? It's a harder one. It's a tough word. We'll see if Matt, Matt, do you know what IPO stands for? <laughs> I may know. Let me summon the power of Google. It's an initial public offering. It just basically means that a company that's private becomes public. And then the general public is able to buy fractional ownership or shares of a company. So they go from private to public, initial public offering. Love it. And someone asked earlier, what's a good stock for me to be in? Uh, let me see who that was just to make sure. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to scroll. There's so many good questions coming in, guys. Yeah, someone asked, what's a good stock for me to buy? My opinion would be Roblox, especially yep. if you use it. One of the uh, methodologies that I've always lived by is uh, buy what you love and use. So do you like Roblox? Mm -hmm. You enjoy the game? Yeah. You should buy some shares of Roblox, right? Do you know that me and your mom have some money set aside in an account just for you to buy shares of this? Well, never knew. You never knew? Well, now you know. Oh, Christmas <laughs> comes early for Gabe. <laughs> yep. Yep. So yeah. here's a here's a question that Max Levine asked uh, earlier. He said, my dad says I have to back trade stocks before I do the actual stock trading. What is back trading? So Jeremy, that's a great, I see Roblox right there. That's a great one to, or that one. Yeah. Show us a little bit about what back trading is, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. So back trading is probably the absolute best way to start learning how to create cash flow, Max. Learning how to buy and sell something in a repeatable fashion. So you buy it low and you sell it high. So this is what back trading is. 
Um, imagine if we go back a whole year, um, let's do it on this company. Uh, type, a, type a three into the chat pane if you guys know what Snapchat is. So if I go all the way back here, let's go back about a year ago and I look at Snapchat. Okay, so this was almost a year ago on Snapchat. If I'm looking at this particular um, chart, what price is Snapchat trading at? About a year ago, what price was it trading at? And we'll practice, we'll practice some back trading. I'll kind of show you, Max, what it is. All right, Max, Jalen, everyone's getting it correct. The answer is $16.79. Yep, $16.79 per share. So we're gonna do a quick true or false statement. If you buy one share, you have to spend $16.79. Is that true or false? All right, that is true. Yep, that is true. Great job, Summer. Thanks for writing that in. You're absolutely right. All right, so Max, let's pretend that we buy 10 shares of Snapchat. How much would we have to invest? And anyone is welcome to answer that question. Do you know if you had to buy 10 shares of something at $16 and 79 cents? So you just move the decimal once to the right and it gives you 10 shares. Yep. $167.90. That is the math of that. So again, you guys would be able to raise this money by doing chores, by going out and mowing lawns, by helping someone in the neighborhood clean up their porch, all kinds of things. So when you are doing that, um, the goal is for you to buy that and then obviously sell it at a higher number than this. So this is back trading, Max. Notice I'm going to press a few buttons and you see how the stock starts to go up in value. So a month later, we're able to see that the stock actually went from 16 a share to what is it right now? Let's say 19.26 or 19. I can't. Yep. It's a little blur. 19.26. Yeah. So my dear friends, uh, Saya and Nora, if you bought at 1679 and now it's at 1926 are you making money are you creating cash flow are you increasing your investment yes or no and the answer my dear friends you're all absolutely correct yes absolutely absolutely so if you buy something at 1679 and you and you sell that thing at 1926 you will make money and if you had 10 shares, can someone tell us how much of a profit you made? Ooh, that's a tough one. So let's say we had 160, 16, 79, $79. All right. And then we sold at 192.60. So this is how much we bought for, and this is how much we sold for. What is the net profit, the net cash flow created on that? Robert Eddy says, what program do you use to back trade? This one's called tradingview.com. Yep. Robert also got the answer correct. 19260 minus 167.9 equals $24.70. Great job, Max. Right. And That's no one's going to get rich on 2470, but this is a huge, huge milestone if you can get this concept where... What did you guys have to do to make $24.70? Imagine that automatically comes to you. And then imagine instead of 10 shares, you had 100 shares. Then it's $247, right? Now we're talking about some bigger dollars. What if you had 1,000 shares? What if you worked really hard all summer and bought 1,000 shares of this, right? So there's the cool part is you can make money while you're sleeping. You don't have to. You can do your school. You can hang out with your friends. You can go to your practices, and the idea of money making money for you, like this literally is money going and getting a job and bringing you back some more money. That isn't really taught in the local schools. Jeremy and I are going to try to fix that and <laughs> change that over the next many, many years. But the idea of money making money for you is a very foreign concept for most of our education system. 
Yeah, I love what you said there, Matt. When you're taking money, you're buying into something. And when you use that money to buy something, buy, to buy an asset, right? Buy something that goes up in value over time. Your money is actually going out to bring more money back to you. That's what it's doing. You're releasing it out into the world so that it can work for you and provide value and goodness for other people. And it can bring you back more money. Type in a three. That's a really cool concept. If you like that idea. Yeah. Now, one book I would suggest everyone here reading, if you would like to, it's a very, very simple book. I actually read this when I was nine. It's called Richest Man in Babylon. 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 Richest Man in Babylon. It's a really, really good book. You can get it for free everywhere. So uh, that's going to be the next book that Gabe reads. All right. Because Gabe, one of the things that he's going to be doing is he's going to read books. And when he finishes a book, he's going to get a reward. He's a very, very good reader. Uh, he reads like 10 pages a minute. I mean, seriously, Matt, this guy can, he's a voracious oh. reader. It's amazing. Nice. So uh, I'll be uh, giving him many books to read. And as a reward, parents, this is something for me to you, a reward, have your children read some books. And if they want a new video game or new shoes, or they want to upgrade their Discord server or whatever they want to do, have them read a book. And as a reward, have them write like an essay or tell you what they learned from the book and then provide that reward for them. I finished that because you're a monster, man. You're amazing. So Jeremy, I, I think I may have told you this a few years ago when your book kind of debuted on the scene, I paid my kids 50 bucks. I put $50 in the very last page and uh, they found it, which means they, read, they got to the last page. That's so cool. Yeah. Incentivize them. I love that. That's awesome. That's such a, that's a great one, man. I mean, money here's the cool part. What if, yeah. So what if gang, what if you kept the stock and just held it until the current day? So what if you bought 10 shares and you just sat on it for a couple of years? What do you guys think is it would be worth more or less than what you paid for it? Yeah. Great question. Do you guys think Snapchat's going to go up or go down over the next three years? We went out of the screen already. Look at those moving yeah. averages. Oh man. Moon Lambo. Well, look at that. So right now it's worth $58 a share. And it touched, looks like it almost touched $75 at, at one point there. It's a couple of weeks ago. Brooks says nice hammers. <laughs> Absolutely. Some beautiful hammers coming in on this particular stock, giving you a really great indication of where you could have bought this. If you weren't in already, yep. But think about that, gang. If you had, what do we buy it at? $16.79? So 58, that's 58.35 minus 16.79 yep. times 10 or 100. I mean, yep. you got some, some gainage that you're sitting on. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. literally did nothing. Your money went to get a job and brought you back more money. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool part about this, gang, is I just put the link to Cashflow Quadrant. Um, just if you scroll up just a little bit, if you click on that, the idea of trading when you're young you're trading your time for money right so you're getting a job you're mowing yards you're, you're basically trading your time for money and there's nothing wrong with that everyone starts there but when your money can go get a job and work for you uh if you if you look at the the cover of the book there you'll see the esbi acronyms there on the cover of the book and it basically just represents on the left side you're an employee so you you work a job Nothing wrong with working a job. That's where most oh. people are. Yep. Then the S is meaning you're self-employed. So if you have maybe a little business, like a little Instagram business or something, you're, you are your own boss. And that represents, again, you're just trading time for money. Nothing wrong with that. It's a good place to be, uh, at least a start, I should say. Uh, and then the B means a business owner. So if you own a company like Real Life Trading, if you own uh, your own um like doctor's office, whatever, whatever the business is, you own an actual business with employees and systems, you would be a business owner. That's what the B represents. And then the I represents an investor, which is like the ultimate uh, level. So whoever asked about Warren Buffett, he is all about the B's and the I's. He is an I and he buys those B's. So he's an investor who buys businesses. And uh, I actually got to see him live a few years ago in Omaha, Nebraska, I got to see his annual 
Berkshire Hathaway shareholder conference, which is pretty cool to do. If you, if you ever get a chance, ask your parents to go there. You really only need, Jeremy, you need one share of his A-class, which at the time was like 190 bucks. Yeah. So I, I, I brought my broker statement. I said, hey, I own at least one share. I got in for free. Did you only buy one share though? I did. Well, no, I had more than one share, but you just need a, you need a minimum of one share yeah, to get in. Right. Yeah. And so the cool part is that uh, it, it was a weekend thing. And uh, he, this will blow your mind, gang. He said on stage, he said that they get a hundred million dollars a week of dividends coming into his office for all the companies, the Coca-Cola, all the shares of companies wow. he owns. And you know what he said about the hundred million dollars a week? And I quote, that's quite satisfactory. <laughs> quite satisfactory. A hundred. You guys imagine that hundred million dollars a week. Now, obviously, you can buy a lot of video games. You can buy a lot of things. But if you think about like becoming a good citizen and using that to change and help influence the world and uh, use money to become a, co- a force for good, uh, you're, right, you're able to make literally an impact on the world. So. It's not always about just getting rich. It, there's plenty of things that you can do to make a difference in the world. So. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Guys, we're doing amazing. We only have 20 more minutes left. Absolute max. What other questions do you all have for myself or Matt or anyone else who might be here? I love it. We're doing some amazing things so far. And again, even this one webinar, this one moment might be something that you remember for the rest of your life right? It's a possibility. I remember when I was a young kid, remembering very specific moments where my parents or my, uh, my, my friends poured into me to help me learn. So this is wonderful, wonderful you guys are doing this. Brian says, what goes into buying stocks? Investing into a company I believe in. That's it, Brian. So investing into a company that you believe in and hopefully use is a really, really great way to become a buyer of stocks. Yep, that's it, man. There's a question about your beard that just came in there. Now, Brooke has the best question so far, I will admit. <laughs> Brooke says, why is your beard so big? That is a phen- that's a phenomenal question. Why is, my, why is my beard so big? You don't shave. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer. That is the answer. Oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. I think it's because mama likes a, b- a beard, right? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes. So we have another question. It says, do you think that Bitcoin will still be around when I'm older? And if so, should I start buying it when I'm young? So the answer to both of those questions are yes. Bitcoin will be around when you're older. And yes, you should start buying it now. That is absolutely correct. That's a phenomenal question. Love that you asked that. Amazing, amazing. Matt, I heard you have some Bitcoins. I do. I have some Ethereum as well. Love it. Love it. So Kaz says, not at 50,000. Well, what's interesting, Kaz, is a lot of people said that when it was at 3,000. They're like, I don't want to buy it at 3,000, right? Do you know what it was at 3,000? A year ago, Kaz. A year ago. One year ago. So actually, it's not even at 50,000. It's at 58,000 right now. Imagine that. So one year ago, Bitcoin was at 3,000, right? Yeah, I think it was like 3,800, but yeah, it's really, really close. Yeah, 3,850. Yeah, so let's say 4,000. And would you guys believe that someone early, early years, I think this was like 2010 or 11, Jeremy, someone traded 100 Bitcoins for... Pizza. pizza. Yeah. A pizza. That was, that was the most expensive pizza ever sold. Now at yep. the time it seemed like a fair trade, but looking into the future, looking back now, you'll see that maybe not the best. <laughs> well, so here's, the best here's, here's a really ever. interesting question is would Bitcoin have had utilization value if that transaction didn't occur? Say that again. Would Bitcoin have a utilization value if that transaction didn't occur? Because they were that was the first use of it buying something physical. Right. Yeah, it's a good question. So I don't know. Like maybe that was the catalyst where people were like, oh my gosh, people can actually buy things with Bitcoin. So, right. Yeah, it was it was a very expensive pizza though. So the answer is, in my opinion, um, Bitcoin will go higher over time. Yes, it will have fluctuations. It will have movements. 
but in the long scheme of things, it will be much higher than where it is now in the next few years. What's really interesting is, do you guys remember last year, for those who were here, one of the stocks that I talked about? This would be an interesting one, but one of the stocks that I talked about last year, Matt, GameStop. Oh boy. <laughs> yep. And GameStop this time last year uh, was worth approximately around $4 uh, four dollars a share. Yep. Four dollars a share. And right now it's worth a little bit more than that for whatever particular reason. Uh, for, it went from four dollars to two hundred dollars. All right, Simon is here. What's going on, Simon? This is the son of Santosh. Nice. Me, me and your me and your dad are gonna be hanging out next week, man. Did you know that? He's coming to Nashville to hang out with me. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna hang out for the like three or four days. It's gonna be really fun. Thanks. Ryan says, what are some tips you have for teens looking to start investing in the stock market? Um, study and go on YouTube and watch a lot of videos. That's really any particular uh, any particular channel, Jeremy, on YouTube? You know, I think there's one really good channel you should probably check out called Real Life Trading. Uh, go to Real Life Trading, right? Search Real Life Trading Stocks and click on that and just watch all the videos that you can. So start pouring in because they're all free. So this is, again, look at this video, how to safely trade penny stocks. That's a great video that you probably would want to watch and spend some time on. So Brian, great question, but that's my, uh, that's my tips. Biggest tip, man, go to Google and type something in. Google is your friend. And I think personally, it's a great way to learn and to explore new ideas. Brooks says, do you recommend GameStop? Um, I did recommend GameStop when it was at $4. When it's at 200, I would say wait a little bit. I think it can go a little bit lower, personally. It's, uh, like a, you know, it's inside week too. Yeah, so I wouldn't specifically say buy it up here. Uh, if you want to, Brooke, maybe buy a very, very small amount, but it's much better to buy down here. In fact, just four weeks ago, it was at $50 a share. And it went all the way up to 300. So Max, talk about cash flow, brother. Right? Imagine buying something at 50 and four weeks later selling at 300. And even so if that's ten dollar, ten shares, hundred shares, whatever. Dude, ten shares would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be a twenty five hundred dollar profit. And I just dollars. and I just put a link to our kids uh, trading for young adults class. If you guys want to look at that. Um, yep. If you want yeah. to take a look at that, it's four and a half hours of online, and then it's something you can easily do in a weekend. It's got a little workbook. You get a certificate at the end that says you completed it. So yeah, super cool. One other thing I'll, I'll add too, gang, is if you think about, we talked about this a little bit last night. Uh, if you think about your time, if you think about it in terms of it being very rare and very precious, it's not a infinite ever forever kind of thing. We all, we can't really predict when, um, when we're born, we can't really, we don't have any dates in mind for when that happens or when we die. But if you think about your time as being a scarce resource, something that is limited, it kind of makes you shift and think a little bit and put more emphasis on the present, right? So instead of spending maybe, you know, three hours a day on Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, learning the coolest dance, whatever. Maybe you cut that time in half and you spend maybe half that time reading a book, listening to Broke to Woke podcasts, reading Money Grows on Trees, reading some of these books that we suggested. And you can literally start building like the new version of yourself. So if you think of yourself in terms of like software, you are currently like a version 1.0, right? So Max Levine, version 1.0. Right. And you can start thinking about and building version 2.0. And then when you get to a certain stage, you're like, okay, 2.0 is ready to go. I'm stepping into that. And version 1.0 is, is behind me. And then we're working on version 2.1, 2.2, right? You guys understand how that works. And so the idea of using your free time to kind of leverage and catapult you into the future and improve the future version of yourself, it's kind of a foreign concept. And a lot of, uh, even my kids, they struggle to spend lots of 
time on things that are really meaningful instead of just, you know, wasting your brain away watching silly cat videos all day. And I'm not saying you can't be a kid. I'm just saying maybe use some of your free time you would have wasted on something that you can make an investment in. Because again, you're planting seeds of time and money and how you spend your time is what we're talking about now. So. Yeah. Jalen, that's awesome. He says, I'm halfway through the Young Adults program and I'm enjoying it. That's so, so cool. Thank you so much for going through it and spending that time investment on yourself and on your future. Because remember, you probably have friends and people that you care about and people that you like and things that you want to help improve in the world. And you would learn this information and be able to share it with others. So I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for telling me that. I love it. All right, boys and girls, a few more minutes left. Any last minute questions? Brian says, do you recommend Disney? Yes, Disney, great company, longer term, will go higher. Gabe, do you agree? Gabe's giving us a thumbs up on Disney. I love it. Santosh says, this was very fun. Simon, awesome. I'm so glad you had a blast. Isn't Matt the coolest person ever? <laughs> I have a forward to the chat page. We love that guy. Oh, 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 I love some cool. Now I'm going to throw in a forward for my boy, Matt. Yeah, my nickname's Denzel. <laughs> Denzel Washington. He's got a real life trading merch. That's it. He does yeah. have real life trading merch. Yeah. That's a factual statement. You do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Brooks says, I'm going this weekend. Nice. Very, very cool. Let me out. Very cool. Here's some, here's some other cool merch, gang. Look at this. A real life. Neon sign. Whoa, oh, look at that. Look at oh, that. Turning on the neon. <laughs> turning on the neon signs. Look at that. Uh oh. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Well, team, it's been an absolute honor, privilege, and pleasure to have you all here. Thank you. Do me a favor go give your parents a hug because they're awesome and they help you grow. They feed you and they give you all kinds of good stuff in your life. Simon says, I want a shirt one day. I will make that happen. I will take care of you. Gabe cool. has a shirt too, don't you, Gabe? Cool. Real, real quick question, gang. Can everyone maybe type into the chat pane maybe at least one takeaway, something that you learned uh, from this? Maybe it's lots of stuff we talked about today, but maybe it's a book you think you want to read, something you can put in action maybe in the next week, a uh, course you want to learn. Oh, here comes Mike, Mike Entourage. Oh, the Entourage is here. Oh, all the puppies. Yeah, so what's the big takeaway? Jalen says everything. Look at this I guy. Simon says, I learned how to buy stocks and how a little more stuff cleared up. That's beautiful. Simon says. Robert says, buying <laughs> an Instagram page. I learned that. Fantastic. That's a great takeaway. Huge fan of that. What other takeaways? Thank you. Joey says, buying social media pages. Hey. Whatever takeaways you have, there's always one that you can get from anywhere. I want to read The Richest Man in Babylon now. Babylon. Babylon, yeah. Yep. Babylon. It's a great book. You got a weekend ahead of you. You're one of your yep. next ones to read. No. Yep. That's no. one of your next ones. No. Saya says, you can hold stocks for a long period of time and earn more money. Woo, what a good takeaway. I love that Ooh. takeaway. Yeah, money making money. I like it. Yeah, by, by the way, Gabe, what um, what uh, website do you go to for your stocks? Wall Street. Wall Street Survivor. You nice. guys have heard that. It's a really, really cool free website. Uh, if you're a parent out there and you're listening, you can have your children practice their trading and their investing with wallstreetsurvivor.com. Entirely free. Really, really simple to use. Very nice. Brooke says, learning to invest in myself. I love it. Kaz says, I learned new stuff about the market. I will read more. Nice. Awesome. Really Max trading, learned about trading for back trading. Yeah. Back trading. Back trading. Awesome, Max. Great takeaway. Well, my dear friends, it's an honor and a privilege to spend time with you. Thank you for giving me your energy. Thank you for giving me your attention. It means a lot to me. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. If you have any friends that you know of, that you, enter, that you work with or you like or you play video games with, tell them about RLT, tell them about this video, tell them to watch this recording. Jalen says it makes me more excited for the other programs. Fantastic. Well, guys, you are awesome. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoying reading your books, learning about stocks, asking your parents great questions. Because remember, the quality of your questions determines the quality of your life.
Thank you. Bye.